Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I have NHL player Terry Ruskowski, who I also played for when he was coaching the Saskatoon Blades. I did some exhibition games there. And uh, I want to ask him a little bit about when he was playing with Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, I'm sure he's got a lot of great stories to tell. How are you, Terry? Jack, I am fine. Thank you for asking. Doing fine. That's awesome. It's been a long time. Um, last time I saw you was early 90s. Wow. Boy, <laughs> it brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it, Jack? Wow, yes. it's incredible. A long time. How, time, how time flies by. It's, you know, <laughs> they ask me questions, what year What year did you do this? And I'm going, gosh, I time flies. So it was a two or three years ago. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah, I got... Um, and, that's, and that's not old age just saying it either. <laughs> no, it's a lot going on, and it's hard to remember it timelines. Is. Yeah. Uh, I ended up playing for you for some a few exhibition games in uh, with the Saskatoon Blades, and you were coaching me. And I still remember that, and it was a great time I had there. Jack, you you, you really kind of impressed me, and I think Thank you know you. that I did that that I that you impressed me. I really liked you a lot, and it's very tough coming in as a free agent and in free agent and juniors. It's it does sound strange, but usually you, in in the, in the juniors you're, you you get drafted or be in your protective list. Yes. And uh, and if you're not unprotected, it's really tough to make the hockey squad. And I really liked you. Thank and you. And it was it was totally up to me. You'd have been playing on my team. Oh wow! Thank you. I was I was the very last cut. I remember uh, they brought I think the two guys back from the NHL, and then uh, I just didn't I didn't know if it was my size or you know because they they wanted big guys back then. I'm five foot eight. I was about one seventy. And I wasn't sure if it was the size that they, you know, the manager was looking for or what it was. Yeah. No, it, it really wasn't because I was 5'9", 170, played in NHL. Mm -hmm. So to me, the size wasn't the factor. What really was the back the factor for me when I was getting players to recruit for me when I was coaching, it's not the size of the stature, it's the size of the heart and desire that you, every, every person had and every player had. That's mm -hmm. what I determined on who's going to make my team. Unfortunately, the situation was, I didn't have much to say in the matter, um, but looking back on it, I should have fought harder for you to stay because I think you'd have been a great addition to my team. Thank you, Terry. means a lot. Thank you. Uh, my just, pleasure. Yeah. And I met you uh, as a kid but when we were doing the King Skate when I was about oh, 10. And then after that, that's when I didn't I think it was about 10 or something. We did a, they did a king skate at uh, Culver. I remember that too. Yeah. Was, yeah, that, was yeah. that was fun times. Yeah. That was a long time. <laughs> they don't have that Culver City. No. You know what, Jack? I, I don't. It, now, every NHL team has their own practice rink. Yeah. And their dressing, their dressing room is unbelievable. Unbelievable, Jack. It's incredible. Yeah. And, and back in the Culver City days, the boards were warped. Yeah, there was had there's holes in the mesh and the netting. Uh, it was cold and dark, and our dressing room was probably the size of a, a friggin' uh, phone booth, a couple phone booths. Period. There's just no room there. There's enough no. room to get your skates on your and go out there and practice. Um, the the only good thing about it is you can get in your car and put the air conditioner on or put the windows down. Or if you had a convertible, put your top drive and. <laughs> down and drive home <laughs> the ice was terrible too i remember uh, the ice there at culver was not uh, good <laughs> it was like stick it was like stick hang a tennis ball in the gravel pit <laughs> um, yeah so yeah. How, how many years did you play in the nhl in the nhl i i 11 years at uh, 10 years i was signed last uh -huh. year i was signed to a contract I only played three games uh -huh. uh, i was playing and i got hurt i never got back in the lineup they thought i was too old Oh. And uh, I, I kind of worked in the front office when the, when I wasn't on the ice. Uh -huh. I worked in the front office, uh, but before that, I played five years in WHA, the World Hockey Association, with That's Gordy right. Howe wow. and the boys. That's right. But you know, but you know what, Jack? Yeah. It was kind of a blessing for me last year. I, I I hated flying. I'm still scared of flying. But it was the last year that I think the good Lord just said, you know what, Terry? With all the worries and the stuff you went through, I'm going to give you one winter off. You're going to you're going to get paid but you're going to have a totally relaxing winter. And you know what? It was. I went through like three cords of wood with the fireplace because I was in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and it was cold as heck up there. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I I practice hard. 
I never complained. I, I never do complain. And when you work hard, I think you deserve to be playing. But it was a situation where they thought that I was a little bit too old and maybe not fast enough at that particular time. And I accepted that. I knew it was kind of the end of my career. So I just worked hard, never complained, and tried to encourage the players that I was with, that I was around as much as possible to play and work hard. Yeah. That's what, you know, the, you brought a – you bring that presence to the re, uh, locker room and then people try to follow after you because I think yeah. you were a big uh, presence. You were captain also. For many years in the NHL, I was. And I, I, yeah. I don't know why they selected me, but I think, I, I think that my my work ethic on the ice um, and my work ethic in practice, mm -hmm. and I think my desire to stick up for my teammates on the on on the ice of the game. Um, I I didn't say a whole lot, but I remember one case. Now I haven't told a whole lot of people about this, Jack. Mm -hmm. I think you're the only exception. We were playing in Pittsburgh one time, or in New Jersey, and I was with Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and we lost in overtime, and we should have never lost. And I was the first one to dress, and I was really upset. And everybody was walking in like, oh, but, you know, whistling and kind of yeah. not really feeling bad about it. And I just I just snapped. Ooh. I grabbed my skate. And everybody said, I grabbed my skate, and I threw it against a chalkboard, one of those, you know, on-wheel chalkboards. Yeah. And I just and I just started screaming. I said, "What's the matter with you guys? You don't even feel bad about this, about their loss." And I kept on going and going and going. And I, I see the coaches and coaches with me. He opened the door, and I was yelling and screaming at the guys. You know, it's, you know, I, where's your heart at? Where's your desire to win? You know all this. And he closed the door right right away. And I kept on. And I just and I was just so I was so mad. I was so upset at their yeah. attitude about losing. So I just showered up and I went in the, in, the, in the bus and I just sat there by myself until everybody else came on. I was just, I was mad, man. You know, and you know the good thing about it is I think guys, some of the guys took it to heart. And we won like three or four in a row after that. Yeah, they they, they realize that you care. They some guys don't care. Yeah. Just, oh, I agree. I think that some of the guys there when, when I played, they seemed like they were just there for the paycheck and mm -hmm. as long as they could get a clear paycheck, and they didn't matter if they won or lost, and that just really bothered me, like. Yeah, a lot, like a lot. Yeah, because you want to win. You're a competitor, and winnings and at that level, winnings everything. We're not exactly. talking. We're not talking kids hockey where you just okay go have fun. This is serious. Yeah, it's a, it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking kids hockey. They don't keep score. They no. keep score in the NHL, and they're yeah. going to evaluate you on what your talent is. And um, and I think that was the reason why I went to Minnesota. I was I was told to uh, go to Minnesota, try to get their dressing room in, in place and try to get everything that, you know, the, the leadership or this, the words you have to say and the things you have to do to get the guys going in the right direction. Because at that time, they had the talent, just didn't have the leadership to make it all come together. Yeah, leadership is so important. Um, yeah, who did you idolize growing up playing hockey? Who was okay, here's two, here's two guys. Are you ready for this? Yes. Gordy Gordy Howe, which I actually played with, wow. which is an absolute thrill in my life. The other one, nobody, not many people know about it, but the guy's name was Andy Bathgate. Oh yeah, and he played with Toronto, and he I think he played with somebody else uh, for a little bit. But I used to watch him on TV all day. Number nine, Andy Bathgate played right wing, and and, and I, I idolized him. Him and Gordy, two nines, and, <laughs> and and when I played when I played minor hockey. I always try to get number nine because I want to emphasize it as much as possible yeah. because they were, they were, those are guys that I really looked, looked up to. Now, I played with Gordy, and I played against Andy Bathgate. I think he played one year, half a year with the Vancouver team in the WHA, and I was wow. playing for Houston. And we went into, into Vancouver to play, and, and he was there, and I just – You know, I, I know I shouldn't have said this, and I and I went up to him, and we're just we're standing in line to wait to shoot. And I said, "Mr. Bathgate, I said you were my all time favorite player. Oh, You're my idol." Nice. And and he said, "Thank you, young man." And I, I don't know if it made him feel old or not, but I, I had to I had to tell him I had to yeah, tell him that he was, absolutely like he was my, he was my hero. <laughs> and of course, playing playing with Gordy. I said I told him that every day. I said, "You're my idol. You're my idol. I love you. You're my idol." <laughs> And you also play with Morris Lukowicz, which is a friend of mine who I interviewed recently, and he was telling a lot of Gordy stories. Did you have any other Gordy Howe stories? Well, I, I do have one. I have a couple of them. Uh -huh. I, uh, 
I play golf with him in a tournament. It's like, I'm just trying to play golf and him and I used to be partners a lot of times in different tournaments. And what a, what a competitor. Like I, I seen him a couple times. He's like a seven iron, nine iron, put the ball right in the hole. Like wow. it was nothing. I'm going, <laughs> are you kidding me? The other time, and, and I heard, and I heard, I didn't see this, but I heard he never played tennis before, but he picked up a racket and beat his two sons, um, uh-huh. which was a lot younger. But the one story you have, and I have to tell you, and it was really incredible. We we're we we're waiting for the first playoff game. We had like ten days off before, just eight ten days off before we played, and uh, we we're scrimmaging. And I put the puck between his legs and I went around him. And I kind of thought to myself, I don't know if I should have done that. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I tried it again, just you know, without even thinking. I got halfway through, him, whoop, a stick in the head, oh. and I went down. I, I was cut and bleeding. The guy, and he said, "Whoops, sorry, kid." And so the trainer came out through the towel, covered me. I was going off to get stitches, and he passed me on the bum. He said, "Don't ever make me look bad." Wow. And I said, "I said, Gordy, I promise you, <laughs> my face promise you, I will never do that again." <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, he was very tough, right? So nobody messed was, with him. No, he was tough. He didn't fight a whole lot. There's one time he was in Detroit. We had an exhibition game, mm-hmm. and uh, a guy tried to tackle him. He, he tried to fight him, and it was kind of pitiful because Gordy hit him once with a glove. The guy went down and was grabbing at his ankle. Like, wow. <laughs> like, please, please, daddy, don't do it again kind of deal. Um, and that and that was it. That was the game. But let me tell you something. Was he protective of his sons? Oh, baby. Boy, anything happened to Mark or Marty, boy, Gordy's right there. He was, like, wow. right there protecting his sons. And I think the whole family was like that. Like yeah. something happened to Mark and Marty was there and Gordy was there. It's happened to Gordy. Then, you know, Mark and Marty were there. It's just, they were a very tight, tight family. They cared a lot for each other. And yeah. That's why I respected Gordy so much because Mark and Marty were such good guys that they, you know, they weren't spoiled. They didn't, you know, didn't think they were great. They just, they were just part of the team and they were obviously a big part of the team in Houston, but they never thought they were bigger than what they should have been. And, yeah. and I respected that Gordy bringing them up the way that he did. Yeah. He did a good job with that, you know, very good. Yeah. Very good job. Yeah. And want to ask, how did you get good to make it to the NHL? You know, he, he, I, my birthday fell on the wrong day, and I always uh-huh. had to play against kids older. Uh-huh. I was nine years old, and I had to play with kids 11 years old. Uh-huh. Um, and I kept, I had to work harder to catch up to them all the time. So the harder I worked, the better I got. I, I, my talent got better. Um, and so when I played against kids like my age, it was, <laughs> I felt pretty comfortable there. Um, but I always had to work harder. But I, I remember that my dad, you know, we went out to a rink. My dad, we were farmers, and we lived about two miles outside of, of the city. Mm-hmm. My dad used to bring me in to let me skate all the time. And there was one time, it was like 40 below, and I was the only kid out there, you know, skating, shooting. Wow. Um, and he brought me in every 50 minutes in case my lungs froze. So I went to the ring shack and warmed up. My feet were always frozen. Went back out there to play. Uh, but I always practiced when I was weaker at. I, my first game, you know, I didn't know what offside was. Too light. I had no idea. So they taught me that. But I could have had a couple more goals. I had one or two goals my very first game. Wow. But I, right. I couldn't raise the puck. So my dad bought me pu- uh, pucks. And after my chart, my after my homework and my, my chores, I used to go and shoot pucks, shoot pucks, shoot pucks, shoot pucks against the garage door, shoot pucks, shoot pucks, shoot pucks, until it got really dark and I had to go to bed. But mm-hmm. I, I practiced all the time. But then after that, it was, you know, I used to score, you know, two or three, four goals a game. It was just, you know, because I knew how to raise the puck and nobody really else did. So I got better that way. But I think it was just hard work. I just, yeah. and I think my attitude is just, I didn't want to be last. I always wanted to be first. That's the way um, to do it. Yeah, I, I just yeah. I, I think the attitude was a pro, was one of them, and to be the best and and just working hard and 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 doing what I had to do. I know that when I was growing up, there was one kid that always always beat me, had more points than I did. Mm-hmm. I was always coming in like second or third, and I was really kind of jealous. I always looked up how many goals you get tonight, how many points well, you got, four or five points. Oh crap, I got to get now four or five or six <laughs> points now. So it always kind of pushed me that always kind of pushed me that way too. He's a really good player. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't go farther, but he, he didn't. But I remember the day that uh, Swift Current put me on the protective list. Uh, man, I was like, it was like dra- me drafting the NHL. They called me up. The coach called me up, drill manager. He said, "Terry, we just we just protected you for the Swift Current Broncos." And I'm going, "You're kidding? You know me? Because <laughs> I seen you. I seen you play many times in different wow. tournaments that you went into." And um, we think that you have something that we want. 
Great. How so old were down. you? How old I was were you? 15, 14 years old. Wow. Uh, I turned 15. I went down. I went mm -hmm. down to their training camp in Swift Current, and I didn't make the team. And it crushed me. It mm -hmm. crushed me. They had a farm team in Humboldt, Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I played one year. Um, I fought about 15, 16 times. I, I, I was assistant captain there. Uh, I hurt my knee at the end of the season. Uh, which is unfortunate. It never really came back to where it should be. And that kind of hampered me in the NHL. But uh, we did real look. We, we first round, we beat the number one team. We, then we lost to the number two team in the finals. But um, the next year, you know, that, excuse me, that 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 fall, mm -hmm. that spring, I sat down with our coach. We were having a party. And, and I said, you know, we're sitting on the wall, sitting on the wall. He sat next to me. I said, what are my chances of me uh, making the uh, the big team, Swift Current Broncos mm -hmm. and Swift Current? Just here, you know, you're you're small. You're not overly fast. I, I know you have a desire. And your shot's okay, but not great. And I said, really, okay. So that summer, fortunately enough, I got a job at a meat packing plant in, in back home in Prince mm -hmm. Albert, where I lived. And I tell you what, I lifted up butt end of, of uh, two or three hundred pound uh, uh, pigs. Mm -hmm. I lifted them up with one hand and put them on a hook. They, wow. It's called the gab. It's called yeah. the gab. They had to hook, heck the gab up to the hook, and they fall off and they go upstairs. And then they, 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 people cut them open and use what they had to do inside. But I tell you what, my right arm was so strong. I was in such good shape. Like they, my mother had to feed me like all the fatty foods, milkshakes, all the fat foods because I was losing weight because I was working hard. They had nothing. Yeah. They had no air conditioning up there, and I was sweating my butt off. But I tell you, I got really strong. I got got really strong. And uh, I worked out hard. I went to, to camp, and I made the I made the team. Wow. Um, I made I made the team. I started off on the fourth line, not playing very much, but I was the first one. In, I was the first one on the ice, last one to leave. And uh, by the All Star break or Christmas time, uh, I was up to second or first line. Wow, that's awesome. You're not going to believe my you're not going to believe my my line mate was Tiger Woods and Ta Tiger was Tiger Williams. Oh, Ty I know uh, Tiger Williams. They have a lot of stories on him. He's that he, was your oh, line yeah. mate. Oh yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a beauty. There's no question. Wow. <laughs> but uh, I, he he started off as a defenseman. Really? And uh, yes, yeah, Dan Dunn, he, he was playing defenseman and we were losing. And man, they were going through him like poop through a goose. Like he couldn't stop anybody. He couldn't turn. He was just aggressive all the time, but he, he, he had a hard time, you know, playing defense, yeah. even though he played there all of his minor career. And I said, Stan, this is killing us. And Stan Dunn was our coach. I said, What mm -hmm. do you want to do? He said, I said, Put him on phone with me. Really? I said, Can you just try it? <laughs> so so he, played, he played left wing with me. And I, I was I was a good passer. I wasn't a great goal scorer. I was a good passer, and he would get in a position in front of the net or in the slot area, and nobody would come around him because everybody was scared to go around him because he was mean and aggressive. <laughs> and and I never looked at his I never looked at his body. I always checked out the stick. I knew the uh -huh. stick. So every time I looked at the stick, I'd pass it to him. He scored goals. I think his last year he got over got fifty over fifty goals his last year. Really? No. Yeah, Good. over fifty. It was first round draft choice by the by the Maple Leafs. And you had Brian Trotche, correct? I uh, love Brian Trotche. What a great player he was. So you yeah. were on his line I was, too? I know he was on. The, he was the center iceman, the second line okay. when I was playing. Because you're center but, iceman too, so I was wondering if you yeah. guys are. Yeah. No, but he that that what a great player. I, I've never seen a kid stronger on his skates than Brian Trotche. I don't skater. think I've ever met a nicer guy as a player than Brian Trotche. Like, never had a bad word about anybody. Mm -hmm. Always a good, encouraging word. Worked hard. He just had talent. His father, mom, and dad sold sold the house, uh, sold his farm and house in Belmarie, bought a house in Swift Current so he could be there, have home cooked meals, and live with his family while he's playing the Swift Current. Wow, that's the kind of dedication his family was. Yeah. But uh, what 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 a what a great hockey player! So strong and hard on skates, you couldn't knock him off. He was the best he's, one on the Islanders. When I went to watch them practice, I picked them out of the group. I was like like ten or eleven. I went to I skipped school that day to watch, and he just stood out. Like he was so fast. Uh, was he that fast in juniors? The same? He had really good speed, but he got faster. He got you know, obviously when you get a little older and stronger, it's mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. But yeah, and yeah, but he was like he didn't have any faults. Like defensively he was solid. 
good passer, good shooter, strong in his skates. I'm going, okay, where's the fault of this guy? He had no faults. He just, mm. he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame because he's just a freaking phenomenal player. And if it wasn't for him, I don't know if Islanders would have won all those championships. Yeah, he's not in the Hall of Fame? He is in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he should be. I yeah, mean, yeah, he is. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't follow the uh, NHL too much as he was in the Hall of Fame, but I know that uh, that he stood out. Like, he was impressive. And, and you also had, uh, from the Islanders, John Tanelli is your teammate. I, I uh, always liked watching Tonto. him. Tonto. We call him Tonto because he looked like he was uh, a native. <laughs> yeah. I, but let me tell you about Tonto. What a work ethic he had. When he went in the corners, there was elbows, knees, sticks, head, everything was flying. <laughs> like, it was just a yeah. Tasmanian devil. Tasmanian devil going in there. He was just gung ho getting that puck and just going. And he was such a good player. Yeah. Such a good player. I I really liked him. Like his work ethic was just like second to none. Like I thought I worked hard. Yeah, not like John Tonelli did. Man, he'd go in the corner and he'd hit you, elbow you, he'd help butt ends you, do whatever they had to do, high stick you, spear you <laughs> to get the puck and make a play. Like he was just tenacious, like tenacious. Yeah. And he was quiet, but always smiling. What a just an excellent person and a great hockey player. Yeah, he great, was I, I thought he was a great hockey player. Yeah, he was fun to watch. Like he, I, I saw him out there, and aggressive play made a difference for the Islanders to have him out there. It's just yes, it's but the the Islanders, I, I really think the Islanders all around probably had one of the best teams ever. They had yeah. goal scoring, they had toughness, they had goals, goals, uh, a goaltending. Every part of the game they had, they didn't have one tough guy. They had a couple tough guys that were really tough, like really tough. So you didn't mess with them that way. And if you want to skate, okay, we'll match that too. Yeah. If you want to have heart, yeah, we got that. And we'll match that and, and, and double that. Yeah. It was just a team that you just didn't want to face. It just, you knew you were going to get beat just by about how much. Yeah, Clark Gillies was there, Gordy Lane. Uh, they had a tough, uh, Gary Howitt. I don't know if nice he was there in the 80s, but. Like nice trim, yeah. I, I fought. I, I fought. Uh, um, what's, the, what's the guy you mentioned? Uh, Howitt. Gary Howitt. Yeah, I fought him in, in the Islanders uh, in, in the Island one time. Yeah, you know you were tough as kid. nails, and you you stood up to every tough guy in the NHL, and uh, a lot of guys wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, here's my scenario, Jack. When, mm-hmm. If I if a guy challenged me, uh, and if I didn't take the challenge. Uh, I couldn't kind of live with myself. I would call myself a coward. I'd call myself God. I I just felt bad, but I didn't meet the challenge. And I'm not. I wasn't going to win all the all the scraps. Um, but I. But as long as I showed up and met the challenge, it kind of I kind of dealt with it better. But if I didn't meet the challenge and it, it bothered me, so anybody else that if it ever happened again, the same guy, even though I might not get the best of it. At least I'm gonna stand up, and I'm gonna do what I can to to, to meet the challenge. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's amazing the stories you have uh, told, and uh, there's a lot of them, and uh, just a lot of stuff we don't know about. That's why uh, I like to talk about this and let people know what's out there, what has happened in the NHL that people don't know about, and uh, yeah. <laughs> You, you, you know, Jack. I, the times have changed so much. Like, yes. you look at you, you look at the systems they use. It, you used to be up and down, stay on your wing, go up and down. Well, the Russians came in and and uh, and they changed it around with you swing, pad, drop, pass, swing, yes. go at it with speed. And then then all of a sudden, the trap came into play. Okay, you're gonna trap them. Everybody went to the trap. <laughs> you know, times have changed so much. It all depends who won is what dictated how everybody else is going to play that next year. Yeah. Um, but you know what else has changed? I think the camaraderie of the guys changed. Yes. When, 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 I, when we went to, we went to a, a away game, we got there a day early. We traveled commercial. We went day early. And, uh, and when I was a captain, we'd always meet at the lobby at a certain time. We'd go maybe have one or two drinks. And if guys went Chinese food or if guys went Italian food or guys went a steak, they all went their way. But we always met at a certain time just to have the team together. Yeah. And then they went our own separate ways. And after the game, you know, you, you're, you're, you're tired, you're thirsty, you have to go have something to eat and have a couple of drinks, go to different places with guys. And the guys got close. And then we travel, get up in the morning and take a commercial flight home or to wherever else we had to play. But now they, they're there the, the night before. 
They they have their charter after the game. They get on the plane. They go either go home or to the next city. There's really not that camaraderie. No, it's that, gone. That used to happen. You know, I, I got to tell you a quick joke, not a joke, but a, a story that I had in, in when I was coaching in Laredo. Yeah. Talk about chemistry. Um, we lost two games at home in Laredo, and that was taboo. Like we we never lost two games at home. And I sat in the dressing room, and we had a, kind of a new team. And I sat next to the rookie, and I asked the veteran, I said, "Where did you play last year?" And I goes, "Guy goes." The veteran goes, "I don't know." He's how many how many kids he had in his family? He goes, "I don't know." <laughs> I said, "Do you know what his birthday is or anything else along that line? Where he's from?" He goes, "I don't know." So I go to the next rookie and I ask another veteran the same questions. And they go, I don't know, I don't know. I asked the third guy, and the and the cat and the and the veteran said, "Okay, we get it, we get it." So the next next week and a half, we didn't play, and mm -hmm. every day after practice, it went. All of them went for lunch together. Nice. And and we started playing as a team, a unit, and we started winning again. We started caring yeah. about each other, and we knew what the situation was, and we started caring and playing for each other instead of being individuals going out there to play. Yeah, and chemistry is important. It starts in the dressing room, I believe. You know, with the I play. totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. I totally agree. When you're when you say this is my brother, then you know you're in the right you're in the right team, caring yeah. for each other. Yes, it's true. Yeah, I want to thank you so much, Terry, for coming on and talking to me. Excellent. It's an honor to have you, and it's a great to reconnect again yes. after. So many years we didn't talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jack. It means a lot. Um, I wish we could meet up again in person. Yes. Because I have a lot of respect of what you did and what you're doing now. Thank you. I have a lot of respect. You're doing a great job. It's a privilege. It's always nice talking. I live in Dallas now, so there's not much hockey talk around here <laughs> like can talk about stories. So when I have a chance to talk of stories about what, I, what experiences have and to you and to people that are listening, it's uh, it's kind of fun to do. So thank you, thank you for having me. I do want to do time. another one. I do want to do another segment with you. I think once I think you have more stories to tell, but we, <laughs> my, <laughs> I can only put so much on at a time, and I'll get you on again. Uh, Jack, I'm always here for you. Thank, thank you, you for Terry. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too, my friend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.